Good day, everybody, and welcome to the first um, Muir College, should I call it an old Murite podcast? And um, I am your host. My name is Neto Makhele. I am from Port Elizabeth, but currently I'm residing in Bumalanga, working at the Kruger National Park as a creative lab specialist. So basically what I do, I do content for a private game reserve called Lion Sands. Um, which is part of the Moore family collection, which is a big um, sort of hospitality company in this part of the world. And um, I moved here 2022, where I started my career. But yeah, my career goes far. So in this podcast, um, I will be giving you um, a bit of what I've done and where I'm come, where I'm coming from and how Muir College has certainly helped me um, or helped to put me where I am right now. But today it's all about me. It's all about... Um, a man who was born in Red House. Um, he matriculated at Muir College in 1988. And then he went over to UPE. For all the old folks, UPE is now called NMU. It was called NMMU, but now they just shortened it. It's NMU. And he graduated with a BCom degree. Um, he has been heading up a brilliant uh, company called Inkanyezi Event Organizers for the past 25 years. And he's been the president of the old Murite Union for the last four years. He's a family man. And what he said to me on the voice note is that it's funny that he went to a boys' school, but um, he's got three girls. Um, obviously, he's married, because, like, where would they come from? <laughs> and he's currently residing in Kabecha, uh, formerly known as Port Elizabeth. I've got for you Mr. Andrew Binning. Good day, sir. Good day, Nato. Nice to be with you. And uh, thank you for that rather long introduction. <laughs> it was but, long. Uh, thank you very much. Nice to, nice to be with you. Cool. Um, so I want to know, first of all, being a, a, an old boy from your college, right? Um, how was it in your days? Because I remember when I was at school, it was pretty strict. You know, um, teachers like Mr. Francis were pretty, you know, up there with like military style of uh, uh, teaching and discipline. So how was it for you in your days? I don't think much different, to be honest with you. I think um, like an all-boys school and, uh, and and we all know Muir College to be one of um, strong discipline. And that's what, what we were taught. Um, so I think very much the same in, in, in my day. And I think very much the same today. You know, I think the discipline is strong. Uh, maybe the teachers aren't able to give um, to give those hidings like they used to, <laughs> but they still uh, try and keep a strong a strong discipline. So yes, in my day as well, we had those that hair inspection and nail inspection yeah. and uniform inspection, and um, so yeah, I think very much the same. So when you talk about hair inspection, I probably would have failed now because you know I've compacted my hair. Mister Francis used to catch us all the time in the lines and it's for the little bit of hair. <laughs> okay, so you're currently living in Port Elizabeth. Um, we know that a lot of people do move away from places like Port Elizabeth to get better business opportunities or just opportunities in general in life. What is the best part for you for living in PE? Uh, Tredo, I think, um, you know, the metro here, and I, I use the word Nelson Mandela Bay metro, which includes Hutenaig and, and Port Elizabeth or um, Karecha and uh, uh, is a, is a really a great place to live in in my opinion um i do travel quite a bit for work but i think uh, myself and, and my family and, and we've got a good group of friends have kind of forged a good a good life for ourselves here uh, it really is a balance i think between between work and uh, and family and um i've had the chance before to to um, move to joburg or a cape town uh but i think we've chosen to stay here in this part of the world in this part of the country and um, very happy here with the the balance between work and and uh, uh, work and and family. And of course, there's some great schools, primary schools, high schools in the area. Um, so it's a it's a great place to live. And um, of course, the challenge is to get to the sea and to the beach uh, as mm. often as possible. Otherwise, we would be wasting that opportunity. <laughs> but uh, it's all it's all good here and a, a good place to live. Okay. So just to go back, um, you grew up in Red House. Red House is a, it's pretty, it's a pretty, uh, a strange sort of in-betweener between, between um, Utnek coming down from, from, from Utnek, 
post dispatch and on your way to um, a deal party. So how was it growing up there? I know that there's a, the, the Red River Mild is always um, popular um, within that area, but how was it growing up in, in Red House? A, a great place to grow up, actually, you know. So um, a, a very small primary school. So when I was in grade seven, uh, there were about 50 people only in the whole primary school. There were seven of us in, in uh, grade seven. Um, so everybody knew everybody else who lived in the village. And... Um, yeah, a very quiet place to, to grow up in, uh, but some nice activities. Yeah, there was a, a very active tennis club and a hockey club and a rowing club and a bowling club uh, and a real mixture between young people and, and older people. So mm. I think a very nice family kind of environment. Um, the River Mile, just recently, for your knowledge, has been moved to the Sundays River because the Swatkops River, which comes past Red House, mm. uh, has not been very clean lately. So they've actually moved the, the, the mile, oh. but it's well known for, for events like that. Yes, yes. Um, and it's quite interesting because the year before I went to Muir, a few boys from the primary school decided to go to Muir. And we heard then via them what a good school it was. And um, they were prepared to fetch us from the train station. So mm. we would, um, every morning... Um, rush for the train and about half an hour a last chance to do our homework um for the half an hour on the train and then that, that was great yeah the, the school would then fetch us from the from the train station and and bring us back up to um, up to the school okay so yeah good, a good place to live and to grow up in yeah um so we all have those memories especially the guys that lived did you live in hostel when you went to your college no, so ironically, my parents weren't keen. I think perhaps they heard that the school was a good school, but the hostel was a bit dangerous. I'm not sure, you know. So, um, so I was shunted off uh, as a as a, a a day a day pot. Um, my allocated house was Ings, so I'm a I'm an Ings house person, um, and probably just as well, you know, because when I got to university, I eventually convinced my parents to let me go to res and i stayed mm. in res on on campus and i think i failed half my subjects uh, in my first year so uh, i was then back off to um back home after the first year of of res in the uh, at university okay so can you please share some of your fondest moments in school fondest moments wow i have many i have many fond moments um I can share with you and others probably I shouldn't, you know, depending on who's going to see this podcast. Uh, I think we but, um, keep it PG. No, many. Yeah, sure, sure. No, many fond me memories. You know, I think the the the, the friends that I, I I made at school, um, I, I made many many good friends. Many of whom I'm, I'm still in contact with now. You know, thirty five years uh, later, um, that memory of catching the train to school. In fact. Going back home afterwards was probably even a better memory because, you know, not in a good way, but um, I mean, we all know how hot it gets in, in Kericha, in Utenegh, and we would walk from the school back to the train station afterwards if we had no sport. And we had to wear our blazer, we had to wear our hats, uh, and I can recall sometimes like 40 degrees, and we, then we had to walk the 2.5 k's back to the train station. Luckily, when we moved to the new school, because I was um, I spent four years at the old school and one year with the school currently is mm. uh, they would then take us back to the to the um, to the train station if we didn't have sport. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, many many memories, you know. But I think I think those are some good ones. Okay, so how do you believe that? I mean, your college is a very um, inclusive school. I mean, with in terms of um, the societies and just like the social life it does uh, create sort of well-rounded men, you know? Um, so I want to know, how has your attending Muir College helped you in your life? Wow, it's also it's a good question. Um, I think we've, we've spoken about discipline, and uh, I think um, I can use that word maybe holistically. You know, sometimes discipline is used in a negative way, yeah. but I think also discipline can be used in a positive way, you know? So uh, making sure you're at school on time, in class on time, that you 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 strive to pass your hair inspection, um, the fact that you greeted and were told to greet people when they walked past you, or you stood up when they walked past mm -hmm. you, um, I think all those elements of of respect uh, for for people younger or older than you, um, uh, and I'm reminded we had um, Jonathan Janssen, the educational um, specialist at at Muir a few years back, and and mm -hmm. he actually cancelled his whole speech. 
when he went to the podium and he said, I want to tell you about this young boy who came up to me when I entered your school grounds and said to me, good morning, sir. How can I help you? And he says, that's unheard of, that somebody would go out of their way to actually come greet you and ask if they can help you. You know, so I think that that um, aspect of discipline, uh, being positive, often we're the underdogs at, at Muir, so you have to, you know, you have to be positive. You have to really be, um, be put yourself out there. But I think those elements of being on time, being presentable, being neat, uh, and, and respectful of those younger and older than you uh, mm. is, is what I've learned and, and I've taken into my, my life and my career as well. Okay. So what sort of life lessons would you like to share? So I could probably share with you um, also in, in 2022 when the school turned 200 years old, uh, we were, many of us were asked to, to supply a life lesson. And I can recall mine uh, being quite appropriate because I tend to battle to say no to people. So I get involved in many different things, <laughs> um, you know, both family related, work related, um, uh, community related. Uh, now more, more recently, the last few years with the old Murak Union. So my, my life lesson is that it doesn't matter what you're doing, but when you're doing something, give it 100%. Don't, don't try and multitask all the time that you don't actually do things well. Or don't be thinking of what's next on your agenda or what's coming next uh, mm. tonight or tomorrow. Uh, whatever you're doing now, give it 100%. And the next thing you do, give it 100% as you're doing it. Sure. Okay. So this one is a bit incriminating, not like incriminating in that way, but um, sort of the, the, you've seen the questions before, so you know that it's coming. So this one is um, anything crazy. What is something crazy that you've done in your life that you believe that not many murites know that you've done? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also a difficult question, you know, Um so, you know, I could I could share some examples with you, but I, I think just to to share that one of my passions is is traveling. I love to travel. Um so I've been to some really um exotic um countries um in my in my life. Uh, I've been to China, I've been to um Singapore, I've been to countries in the east, I've been to Mexico and countries Brazil in the in the West. Um and I, I was actually counting up a few days ago that I, I've been privileged to travel to 51 different countries. So mm. that's 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 what I'm going to share with you that maybe not many Murats know about me is that I love traveling um, and I'm trying to get to that 100 mark, 100 different countries um, before the end of my lifetime. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> but um, yeah, perhaps not, not a daring example to share with you, but just yeah. fascinating that, that, that many would not know about me. Okay. So in terms of you're talking about traveling, and I mean, a lot, a lot of people travel to different countries. Um, you even have people like here at work, for instance, we have Americans coming here all the time. So we always say we've got an American problem. But for you, what is the best country you've ever traveled to? No, that's a very difficult question to answer <laughs> because uh, I, I can put so many in that in that category. But, um, you know, I think Mexico is one country that comes to mind where there's a bit of a language barrier, but the people are so similar to, to us as South Africans. They enjoy mm. life. They want to work hard, but they also want to enjoy their life. So I, I, I've made many friends um, and, and work colleagues also in Mexico. Uh, and then perhaps the other one that I really enjoy is, is Italy. You know, I've enjoyed traveling there a few times. Um, I enjoy the south of Italy. It's it's considered the more rougher part, the, the mm. Napoli, uh, uh, you know, with, Diego Maradona used to play his football for for, for yeah. Napoli. Uh, I enjoy that south part of of Italy uh, just for the people and the the culture and the food. Um, yeah, and then more recently, I've had the opportunity to travel to some African countries as well. So I've really enjoyed uh, going to Egypt and Tunisia and Algeria and some of those North African countries mm. um, are, are quite are quite different and unique um, and and welcoming and. Um, not a normal country you would think of going to, or countries yeah, you would think okay. of going to. But um, yeah, so as you can see, there are many. I could just speak <laughs> the whole time on, on, on traveling. Okay, cool. So my last question is, uh, what, what would you like, or what greetings would you like to share with the um, with all the Murites? So my, my greeting is um, to, to, all, to all old Murites living all over the world. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to, to meet some 
you know, in the countries where they're living um, or, or have, uh, you know, contact with old murites. And I think just to say, you know, stay positive, um, stay connected to um, the old murite union and stay connected to your, to your alma mater. Uh, you might be living in all parts of the world. We've got old murites right from the States to China and everywhere in between. And um, it's been great to see how old murats are, are prepared to stay in contact with their school and with the OMU. And, and that will be my my greetings to to all old boys. Doesn't matter where you are, um, I wish you well. And um, yeah, all the best. And we hope to see you, you know, again at the school one day, press for a special reunion or for some occasion. But uh, stay connected. Okay. So yeah, that's the end of our interview. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> Um, sir, I would like to thank you very much um, for affording us the opportunity to talk to you. And um, we will be staying in touch. And I'm hoping that um, I'm wishing you the best for your future endeavors. Thank you, Tedo. And thank you for for agreeing and being uh, open to leading these podcasts, this podcast series with Old Murats. And I look forward to, to seeing many other Old Murats being interviewed and, um, and and hearing of their uh, experiences at the school and, and post-school. So thank you for your time and your efforts as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys, that is the end of our podcast and our end of our interview with Mr. Andrew Benning, uh, president of the Old Murite Union. It's going to be a surprise, um, the next uh, guest that I'll have for you, but be sure it's going to be someone interesting and maybe it might be somebody from your old class. So from... Me and Mr. Binning, we'll see you again on the next one. Nick Pluribus Impa. Cheers.